everyone, and welcome back to the Museum Show and Tell Show. My name is Nicole, and I'm from the Penetang Machine Centennial Museum and Archives, and I'm here with Genevieve from the Hironi Museum. Hello. And today, um, the theme that I threw at Genevieve for this week is um, because it is National Farm Workers Day, and so I thought uh, we could look at some artifacts that relate to farming. And so when I started looking through my artifacts, uh, I realized I do have a lot of farm equipment, um, especially because Penetang Sheen has a long history of, of farming. But I did come across one um, interesting artifact that I didn't know anything about, so I thought I would share it. And what it is, is I have here a pamphlet and a badge from the Farm Service Force in Ontario. And here it's called the Ontario Farm Service Force Women's Division during World War II. And it is, um, as you know, that during World War II, a lot of our young men would have, um, and some women also would have enlisted in, um, in the war effort. And so a lot of them probably came from farming families. And so there was a great need um, for help in the farming field. And so they actually started up this division to try to recruit um, to work in, in the farming uh, fields. And I heard that they were called Farmettes. That was their little um, nickname that they called themselves. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just really interesting, something I didn't really know a lot about. Um, when I looked at who donated this, they donated a lot of different um, artifacts. This pamphlet here is not filled out. Um, which means no one obviously applied, um, and I'm not sure if anybody applied in this area, but it is interesting just to look through it and to see um, what they were looking for. You had to be 16 years of age to apply, but you could be part of the program starting in when you were 12 years old. It was run through the, y, um, the YMCA and the YWCA. I did find this picture online. Um, so I'm talking about it, the Ontario Farm Service Camp, and it does, that was um, supervised by the YWCA. I would think the YMCA would have been for the young boys, but this was for the young girls. Um, generally, you would want to have good grades to get into this program. And I, a lot of young women want to work in this because it gave them that extra money that they could help contribute to their family. Because, you know, if their um, older siblings were off at war, um, they would want to really help to contribute um, to help out. Um, there's information here. There was different options. Um, there were Ontario Farm Service Force camps that you could live at. You could live at private camps. You could live at select homes or you could be day workers. But the Ontario Farm Service Camps probably would have been the most popular, especially in southwestern Ontario. There seems to be a lot of camps in that area. Um, maybe up in this area where we had some camps, maybe they would have just billeted at the home and helped out. Um, there's no mention of um, how much they were paid, but that was part of a contract that you would have. Um, but it does outline the hours of operation. So it would be basically you'd be working 10 to 12 hours per day for um, six days a week. So quite the hours, um, but there is a website for somebody who has like has been doing some research on these formats, and um, she does have sort of personal accounts from some of the the young women that were part of it, and um, it's quite an interesting um, website, and I will link it below so that you can le learn more about that. Um, but I did find just interesting that we had these two items in our collection, and I I didn't really know anything about them, so. That's why I thought I would bring that out today. So there you go. <laughs> and what do you have for us today, Genevieve? You are not going to believe this. Oh. I <laughs> the same thing. Yeah. This past year while I was off, I was um, accessioning a large donation. And among those uh, were photographs of um, a woman from the area, Port McNichol. Her name was Jean Ramsey. Uh, she later became Jean Ramsey Robb. Some of you might know her. She was a, a school teacher in Port McNichol and Midland. Um, anyway, so I decided to uh, figure out what this farm service force 
was. Uh, I found some um, newspaper advertisements in the free press. Um, they're really very, very patriotic. There we've got the fellas up there who are fighting overseas and it says, we can't fight if we don't eat. And like you'd said, um, there was a huge, because these fellas were all fighting, there was a huge labor shortage in the province. And I know at least I'd read in 1941 that Canada had promised to send to Britain 112 million pounds of cheese alone. Um, yeah, so you can imagine uh, just how much that, that was required to feed uh, the population of Canada and then uh, the, the fellas and the allies overseas. So um, that's why the government had uh, recruiters uh, make speeches at schools asking young men and women, like you'd said, uh, who are 16 years or older to join. And at least by 1943, they were also um, asking the lady school teachers to join in. And that's why Jean Ramsey uh, had uh, enlisted. I know uh, as an incentive for the students that they were um, asked to sign up for, I think, 13 week contracts. At least that was seemed to be what I'd read about. So uh, you can figure that you've got a summer that's maybe eight or 10 weeks long. So that gives you an extra three to five weeks off of school. And they allowed you to do that. You'd get a special certificate from the government that let you off for school, which was honestly would have been incentive for me. But here we are is a photograph of Jean. That's Jean on the end in her farming gear and two of her friends at their camp. There's the YWCA uh, sign up there and they're at a camp um, in Grimsby. It says teacher camp assistants. So I think that all of the women that Jean had served with were other teachers, yeah. uh, none of them, Almost all of the photographs that we've got, uh, they deal with farmerettes. Um, uh, they all seem to be dressed in their civilian clothing. So I think it was probably on their days off or in the afternoons when they go to tea in Grimsby. And occasionally they would go to Niagara Falls. Mm. Um, and it says here on the back, I know uh, there were raspberry pickers at uh, Sammy Schneiderman's farm. There is one instance in the local newspapers of uh, a Romney farm in T Township uh, where there were farmerettes serving. But um, in the uh, between 1941 and 1953, when the program ended, there's a lot of uh, mention in the social columns in the newspaper of young girls um, coming home for the summer or even visiting home their, you know, their hometowns, Coldwater, Port McNichol, uh, from the uh, various farms in, in southern Ontario. So it was really fun to read. Here's another photograph of Jean R Ramsey. Uh, there she is there at the camp. Yeah. And she was one of the lucky girls, uh, well, lucky, depending on who you are. She got to stay at a school uh, that was vacant for the summer in Grimsby. I know that some of the kids uh, stayed in uh, tents. There were old army tents that were set up in the farms. And uh, they managed to borrow uh, army cots as well. So they camp out for the summer, which is lots of fun. So, and I did find, uh, you were talking about pay and I did find that in this instance anyway, um, the girls, the farmerettes were earning 25 cents an hour. If they were picking fruit, they made 20, uh, 25 cents per six quart basket, uh, 50 cents uh, if they were pruning tomatoes. So for every, 250 plant row, they'd get 50 cents for that. And then they also had to pay room and board, which was 450 per week. So uh, they did a lot of a lot of variety of work. It says uh, weeding large plots of plots of cropland, picking fields of corn, stooking wheat. Uh, they did their own laundry. And uh, yeah, it just looks like they had an enjoyable time, these teachers. Uh, I don't know, it would have been kind of uncomfortable, I imagine, for students if the teachers were working on the same farm as the kids, but you never know. So yeah, here we are, the farmerettes. And I do have one more advertisement from the paper. 
uh, is geared toward the students. So there we are, the students. Plan now to spend your vacation on a farm. So there were lots of local girls that did that. Wow, lots what is it on? I know, know isn't that crazy? Both coming up with the same topic when we're talking about farming. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's interesting that we both came up, but it's also it's that one thing when I was looking through all the stuff that we had, like, oh, I could show a cedar or, you know, these other things. And when I came across it, like, well, that sounds interesting. And um, yeah. yeah, and I also think it would have been quite the, um, the adventure, you know, if you were up in this area to be able to go to the Southwestern go and see Niagara Falls on the weekend and live in a different area. And um, and feel like you really definitely were contributing to the the war effort and um, absolutely and it's just something that I had not you know obviously you know duh of course they were probably were you know thinking back like of course people had to work on the farm they probably did you know because we know that women did take on a lot of uh, join the workforce in many different facets during World War to that time period but I never thought about it and you're right the time period it even went up to 1950 three which is which is interesting so that's great that's so interesting that we have <laughs> the same topic and that we know for sure that people in this area did did contribute so what is our theme for next week well i was thinking we could just go very general and we could say something that starts with or is associated with the letter o the letter o okay yeah. so big <laughs> that's a good one all right so i guess we'll see everybody next week hopefully we come up with a different artifact between that's the right. two of us for the letter o <laughs> um but if not it'll still be interesting so i'll see you again next week then okay so bye, bye everyone <laughs>